I'm gonna need some ice in that glass, please. I'm burning up. I'm having a flash flash. What you call a for real flash? Boy, these roses still looking good. I'm gonna get my flowers from Sam more often. I forgot when I brought them, I had them so long.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and truly we are grateful, grateful, grateful. I want to welcome you to I Want to See You Win, our virtual Bible study. I am so excited tonight about God's word, and as always, we are excited about this opportunity to be able to come and gather once again in the name of the Lord. As we walk through the Bible, we're walking from Genesis to Revelation. God has been so faithful and so good to us as we came, as we've been coming together these weeks, as we're walking through Genesis, as we know people of God, that uh, Genesis is the foundation. It is the beginning. It is the understanding. And most people would ask, why are we walking through the uh, Bible? Well, for one, it's because we're getting closer to God ever the more as we learn the character of God as we learn the expectation of God. The more we learn, the more we can grow. So um, people of God, it is imperative that we understand how vital it is to be a part of Bible study. And I am excited today, especially about the word of God on today, because once again, God has uh, graced us and blessed us to understand his word. And as always, I always say, hopefully you guys are bringing your pen and your paper as we gather together. If you have any questions or anything like that, you'll be uh, able to jot down notes and stuff of that nature as we're walking out the word of God. It is my prayer, people of God, that you are winning in God's word, that you are applying the word of God to your life, that you are winning through the power of prayer, that you are winning in your walk with God. This is the season to win people of God. This is the season, amen, to be able to um, rely on God. This is the season that we must uh, get in the presence of the almighty God like never before. This is a very critical time as a believer. This is a time that we have to walk close with God. It is imperative, people of God, that we make our election sure. And what is the word that I always use? Make sure we are what? Solid in our faith. Make sure we're solid in our faith and uh, in our walk with God. So uh, as we are walking through God's word, uh, it helps fortify us. It helps solidify our relationship ever the more. And I tell you, people of God, it is imperative that we, it is, um, it is important, people of God, that we pray ever the more. I tell you, I happen, once again, scrolling down Facebook, I tell you, I just want y'all to know something. If y'all don't want me to see nothing, then don't put it on Facebook. <laughs> Cause I just happened to be scrolling down Facebook and I saw something that was very interesting today. And what was interesting is um, this woman of God was sharing her views about, you know, church folk and how things are going on in, in the body of Christ and people should mind their business and all that other kind of stuff. And I agree 100% with everything that she said. But you know, some it really got me to thinking how we as a people spend so much time doing so many other things opposed to being in the presence of the almighty God. If we spend so much more time getting to know Jesus and making our walk even stronger with the Lord, we won't have time for nothing else. And it is apparent to me based on her, what she was saying and her displeasure in some things that she has personally experienced is that the saints, the church, you know, people are not teaching people to learn to mind their business and stay in the presence of the almighty God. It is imperative that you focus on your household and you focus on your family and you focus on your walk with the Lord. And, you know, I think if we're not teaching people that, then we're, we're not teaching them at all. And so I tell you, people of God, it really, you know, sometimes we laugh at people uh, or we look at people and we don't understand why people do the things that they do. But could you, I'm just going to share this with you all. We can learn from anybody. A baby could teach you something. A child could teach you something. You can learn from anybody. There's a reason why things, you know, when I encounter people with their displeasure or I dis encounter people that's ranting and raving, and if God allows my eyes to see it or my ears to hear it, I believe it's for a reason, not just so that I can be nosy to hear what people are doing, but it's also to shed some light on a situation, shed some light on what's actually going on. You know, because we as intercessors, how are we supposed to pray if we're not knowledgeable about what's trending today? So it's imperative that we be knowledgeable in certain things. So in listening to the woman of God talk, 
you know, I realized more and more, just as I had shared with you all on Sunday, is that too many people are becoming distracted. Too much distraction will cause us to become very ineffective, people of God. It is imperative that we keep our focus in this hour, not to be focusing on other people's life and other people's situation, other people's circumstances. We need to focus on our own. And so that's why it is imperative that we, we learn to do that. So when you learn God's word, um, it'll help you. It'll help you stay focused. It'll help you to understand what God is requiring of you. And what he's requiring of you is to learn of his word, get in his presence, learn of him so that you can be all that you can be for the Lord. None of us in this life has arrived. This is why every day we're striving for perfection. Every day we're striving to do better than we were the day before. So it's imperative that we stay the course and stay focused. So I just wanted to share that with you as we begin to go into the word of God, because when you do that, then when you read the word of God, when you study your word, you take that very seriously. And it's time more than ever, people of God, that we take the word of God seriously, that we take God seriously. This is not the hour for us to take things so lightly anymore. Those days are over. Now is the time to be critical about our faith, be critical about our walk, be critical about what God requires of us. Amen. So as always, um, we're going to get started. Amen. So I hope and pray for those of you that's here. This is your first time. We want to welcome you to I Want to See You Win's virtual Bible study. We are a no walls movement ministry, fivefold, um, but we are a no walls ministry. And we thank God for you, you and you that have um chose to be with us on tonight. We thank God. I'm sure that you could be anywhere scrolling on Facebook, looking at other things, but because you have landed here with us, we appreciate you. We thank God for you. And we just ask for those of you that's here in Bible study, I just ask if you can, please stay on so that we can walk this word out together. Amen. Sometime, just like in church, you wouldn't come into church and then keep going out back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I don't know why I'm sharing this, but the Lord brought this to my remembrance to be able to share this with you all, that we need to stop surfing when it comes to the word of God. If you're here for a service or you're here for um, to, to learn of God's word, let's learn the word together. Let's take time out to walk out God's word. If you walk back and forth through the time I'm praying, if you walk back and forth the time I'm preaching, that's one thing. But when it comes to God's word, let's reverence God's word and let's stay on the live and get your Bibles and get your paper and pen and let's walk it out together. Amen. Amen. Let us start uh, by opening up in prayer. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on tonight, God. We thank you for these, your people that thought of not robbery, but to come on tonight for a uh, virtual Bible study. Father, we ask God that you come in the midst of us, that you will bless us, oh God, as we uh, work, walk out the word of God today, Father. We pray, God, that you will illuminate our mind, illuminate our heart, our soul, and our spirit, God, that the word of God will become evident, God, that it manifests in our life, that we will understand the word of God, that we will understand you ever the more, God. And Father, we ask God that you will put the word in us, oh God. Oh, God, that we will not sin against you, oh God. We pray, God, that you will put the word in our heart, God, that we will grow by leaps and bounds. I pray for growth, oh God. I pray that you would thrust us most expeditiously, God, in the name of Jesus, that we will fall in love with your word, God, that we will be lovers of your word, doers of your word, not just hearers only, but doers of your word tonight, God. And I pray, God, that everyone under the sound of my voice, even those that may see the rebroadcast, God, I pray that their life will be changed forever, God. God, open up our understanding, open up our mind. God, to your will and your way, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we'll be so careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We thank God for each and every one of you on tonight. And um, we're walking out this word tonight. Amen. We're walking uh, through Genesis, through Revelation. We're still in Genesis. Um, just a recap from uh, last week. We uh, talked about God's perfect will versus God's uh, permissive will. We talked about um, when we try to help God out, uh, many of us can truly relate to that because there's certain situations and, <laughs> situations and circumstances in our life that we can totally be honest. If we want to be transparent for a moment, there's been situations and circumstances that we've tried to help God out. 
you know, we were not willing to wait on God. We didn't, we, we understood God and we was grateful for what he said, but then sometimes we forget what God said. And, um, and that's what I call spiritual amnesia. When we uh, fall into the spirit of amnesia, we forget what God said. We forget about the promises that he has spoken years and years and years ago. And so because of that, we get caught up in our present day situation and we forget. And so we see the last week we were together, we talked about how um, Abraham, Abram, excuse me, um, he believed in what God said, but then he got influenced by his wife. And, um, and through her influence, he, he um, went on and did something else, contrary to what God said. And that's why it's imperative, people of God, we understand the art and the power of a weight. When we wait on God, people of God, that's where you'll reap the benefits. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. It is imperative that you understand, people of God, that it's not always good to be in a hurry. This is why the Bible lets us know, be anxious for nothing. See, sometimes when we're in a hurry and we always got to be on the move, we always got to make things happen fast, 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 fast. And we're in the hurry. A lot of times, people of God, uh, we find ourselves in uh, pushing doing stuff outside of the timing and the season of God. And so we found out that when you do things out of the season of God on last week, we found out people of God, that that's what we call Ishmael, uh, something that wasn't necessarily part of the plan, but God has to bless it, bless it anyway. So that's an Ishmael blessing. And in chapter 17, we're going to talk about that God still you know, and, and this is why, again, when we study the word of God, it, it should make you excited that even when we mess up, God is yet sovereign. Even when we mess up, God don't hold it against us. When we mess up, He the promise is still the promise. So that makes me feel so encouraged, people of God, because it lets me know that he's not a man that he should lie. If he said it, he means what he says and says what he means. And that's why I love God so. When God says a thing, you can take it to the bank. It is a done deal. Oh, it doesn't matter how long it takes. As long as we know it's going to happen. Glory to God. I'm not moved. I don't care when it's going to happen. I just know it's going to happen. Amen. Just like a woman who's carrying a baby, she knows that she's carrying this baby and she's she can see the evidence of the baby, but she don't know what the baby's going to look like until the baby's born. Now we got all this technology, 3D and all that other kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, if she chose not to get a sonogram to be able to see what's, what she's carrying and stuff of that nature, she's yet carrying a promise. She can feel the pain. She can feel the discomfort and she knows that she's carrying something. That's faith. And people of God, what I'm saying to you is, is that God makes us a promise and we have to carry that promise to the end, no matter what. But when we help God out, we're going to find out when we help God out, whew, it, we'll get ourselves in trouble. So here we see, and that's what we talked about on last week, about how they went before God and helped God out. And Sarah gave her maid to her husband. And he went with her and they created a child. Now, you know, the promises was already with Abram. God had already made him promises. And because of the connection of her being connected with Abram, the same promises that he made to Abram, he had to turn around and make it to Hagar, who was carrying Ishmael. And so she received the promise from the angel of the Lord. She was prophesied to. And then after that, she bears him a son. They name him Ishmael. And now we're into chapter 17. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Tonight is I'm excited tonight because as I began to prepare for chapter 17, the spirit of the Lord, I always pray and I said, Lord, what would you have me to share with your people as we walk through this word and for chapter 17? And the spirit of the Lord began to share with me about spiritual upgrade. And I got so excited today because the spirit of the Lord let me know that when he changes your name and changes the didactory of your life and the destiny of your life, he gives you an upgrade. He takes you from the old and bring you to a new. So that means you can go from one level of vocation to the next. God is upgrading you. And I'm telling you, people of God, when he spoke this in my spirit, I just it just did something to me because God was letting me know that when you when he makes you a promise, he intends to keep it. 
And so we're going to read chapter 17 in Genesis. And it says, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, 99, y'all, this was a 99 year old man. Now, you, some of y'all can't even wait till 50 or 60, but he had to, he had to wait to 99 years to receive the promise, y'all. And the Lord appeared, hear me, he appeared. He gave him a divine visitation. He came to him. So for those of you that feel like God can't appear to you, that there can't be no visitation from the Lord, this is evident proof that God does come and appear to mankind. Mm. Ain't that something? The Bible says he appeared. He didn't say he sent an angel. It did not say that he he sent uh, um, the archangel. It says he appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Whew, good gracious alive. Walk before me and be thou perfect. So once again, we're learning about God as we're learning through the word and we're learning people of God, the character of God, the nature of God, how God operates, what he'll do from what he won't do by his word. Because one thing for certain, one thing for sure, God won't go against his word. He will fulfill his word. When he speaks a thing, he will bring it to pass. And so we find out here that God appears to Abram. He gives him a decree. He gives him instruction. I often tell you, people of God, is that it's the the destiny, the blessings is in the details. I know some people have said, "Oh, it's the devil in the details." That's the that's 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 fictitious. The blessing, hear me, y'all need to write this down. The blessing is in the instructions of the details. OK, when God gives us instructions, you got to be one thing about God. When God is adamant about you doing something, he will give you explicit detail instructions to carry out something. And when you obey, you can't do nothing but be blessed. Can I just help somebody today? You trying to figure out how can I be blessed? How can I move to the next level? How can God thrust me forward? You need to pay attention to the instructions and follow the follow it to the letter, every detail. When you follow it to every detail, you can't do nothing but be blessed. Hear me. You can't do nothing but be blessed. And can I make a side note here? The enemy does not want you to follow the details. He does not want you to follow the explicit instructions that's given to you. He tries to distract you when God is speaking to you. He tries to distract you when God is trying to give you warning to tell you what you should do to be blessed. Because some of you are earnestly saying, Lord, I want to be blessed. I want you to be pleased with my life. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. God, show me the way. And he's giving you the instructions, but you get distracted. Or he'll tell you to do one thing and you do something partial. Partial disobedience. Partial obedience is like having no obedience. Hear me. Partial obedience is like having no obedience. Okay. Okay. You don't get rewarded for partial obedience. You only get rewarded for total obedience. That's why he said, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So it is imperative, people of God, that you understand that partial obedience is not going to fly with God. OK, so he makes a decree to Abram. He said, walk before me and be thou perfect. Meaning that I have an expectation for you, Abram. I need you to walk up right before me. In essence, I place a standard on you. I place the mandate on you. And if nobody else, I need you to walk up right before me. And then he makes him a, an agreement with him, known as a covenant. And I'm telling you something, people of God, when God, if you could ever get God to tell you an instruction and then follow up with telling you that if you do this, I'm going to do that for you. Good gracious a lot. When he does that, you just might as well say, yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus, because, you know, the blessings is assured for you. That's why I tell you, people of God, God honors our obedience. He honors our faithfulness. And sometimes it's a challenge. I'm not going to tell nobody. 
that is not a challenge to be totally obedient to God because some of the things that he asks us to be obedient with is hard. Sometimes it's challenging. Sometimes he'll tell you to give your last dollar. Sometimes he'll tell you to, to, to fast for two weeks. He'll tell you that you got to cut off people that you love. Sometimes he'll tell you to do something and it's challenging. But my God, there's a blessing attached to it. And so uh, the Bible says in verse two, and when, and I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Tonight, we're talking about spiritual upgrade. We're talking about when God upgrades you. I'm not talking about when man upgrades you. You know, I got an iPhone and it seems like every time they make one iPhone, I got to get a new one because the, 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 the stuff that's on the old one ain't going to carry over to the new one. And then, you know, I'm just in this vicious cycle with iPhone. I'm just sick of them sometimes because every time you look, I got to get a new phone because I always got to upgrade so that I, because when God upgrades you, what you used on the old level and the old platform is not going to be sufficient anymore. He's going to upgrade you. And so tonight we're going to talk about when God upgrades you spiritually, when he expands you. Ah, but I'm telling you, people of God, before there can be an upgrade, before there can be expansion, there has to be an instruction. There has to be a mandate. There has to be an agreement. And so he makes a covenant with Abram. And in verse three, and Abram fell on his face. And God talked with him. See, for all of y'all that say God don't talk to people, for all of you that say God don't visit people, you will see here that he visited Abram. He visited him. But one thing that I love is that he honored God and he fell on his face in reverence and respect to God. And, I, and I'm sharing this and I'm taking my time with the people of God because you need to understand this is a lost art form in Christendom today. As bodies of believer, if nobody is going to reverence God, if nobody's going to reverence God, we as the believers must learn that when we get in the presence of God to humble ourselves, to, 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 to come and make ourselves small in his sight because he's a large God. He's awesome. He's magnificent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's all that. And we can't afford in this hour, people of God, to treat him less than. So when we come in his presence, if that means worship, if that means admiration, we have to give it our whole heart. We got to come before him with, with, with it's not even with a, an entitlement. You see, what's happening today, people of God, we have this entitlement spirit on us that when we get in the presence of God, even online, I know you may be in your car, you may be in your home or in your office or wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you are, because when you begin to think about the goodness of, Lord, of the Lord and all that he's done for you, there should be something automatically that come over you that you just began to say, God, if it had not been for you, that should make you feel unworthy. That should not make you feel entitled. That should make you feel like, God, I don't even deserve what you do for me. But, oh, God, I thank you so much. And an admiration and a reverence should come upon us. And that is something, people of God, that if we ever get that, that spirit of reverence back, if we ever get that spirit of reverence back for God, I'm telling you, it's going to bless your life. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to bless us as a whole. We got to get that reverence for God back and, and get rid of that spirit of entitlement. Too many of us feel we are entitled, that we already know what God's going to do. Oh, I'm going to go to church and I'm going to preach and, and then um, somebody's going to shout and somebody's going to clap their hands and we're going to wave, we're going to sing a song and we're going to go home. We, it's almost like we're so predictable, like we're robots. But people of God, when you get to the point, when you walk circumspectively before the Lord, where you don't know what he's going to do that day, that you, you're walking with an anticipation and excitement and you're just walking and you're saying, well, I don't know what he's going to do today, but I'm excited. You know, that's when you can be open for God to move. And so Abram shows a sign of reverence when he falls on his face and he begins to reverence God. And then he begins to say, in verse four, it says, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Now, the ironic thing, the man is 99 years old. He's 99 years old. Okay, he just had Ishmael. Now, God is saying, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. I'm going to bless your life. I'm going to make you a father of many nations. 
I just had one child at 90 something years old. And now you tell me I'm going to be the father of many nations. God is saying, I'm going to expand you. I'm getting ready to upgrade you. This is God's doing. See, people of God, let me tell you something. A true, authentic, spiritual upgrade is God. Okay, one thing about one thing about a spiritual upgrade, I don't care how much the devil fights you. I don't care what nobody say about you. When God's hand is upon your life and he is giving you a divine visitation and you have been in the presence of the almighty God like Abram did, I don't care what nobody say. You're going to be expanded. You're going to be uplifted. You're going to be uh, upgraded to God expanding you and Look what he does. He gives him more responsibility because you're not just a father to Ishmael. I'm going to make you the father of many nations. I'm getting ready to start and bless your genealogy for generations to come because of you. So this is why it was imperative. God put the spotlight on Abram so that he would be the forefather to many nations. And through him, we would be blessed. And so the Bible says, that in verse five, neither shall thy name. Now here, here comes the upgrade. Oh my God, here comes the upgrade. Here comes the upgrade. Here comes the upgrade. Y'all ready for this? Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. Boom, there it is. For a father of many nations have I made thee. He upgraded him by changing his name. He didn't just make him the father of Ishmael. He made him the father of many nations and changed his name. He expanded him. He spiritually expanded him. He spoke the decree and said, you will no longer be known as Abram. I'm going to, going to expand you and give you a new name. He's upgrading him, Abraham. And so in verse six, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. Look at this. And I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. Good gracious alive. Look at that. He's saying that I'm going to expand you. I'm going to upgrade you. I'm going to add to you. I'm going to bring forth greatness out of you. He's doing it with one man. He's upgrading him for greater. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. He is identifying, establishing his people toward himself. You all will be my people and I will be your God. That is the covenant agreement. I'm going to change your name. I'm going to bring you clarity. I'm going to give you purpose. I'm going to give you destiny. What am I saying, people of God? When God upgrades you, he gives you purpose and destiny. He gives you dominion. What he gave Abram, changing his name to Abraham, he gave him dominion. And he gave him authority. So for those of you that need to identify where kingdom authority comes from, here we go. God made a covenant with Abram, Abraham now. And in verse eight, and it says, I will give unto thee. Look at this. He's giving him a declaration. And to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Boom. I'm going to make you rich, Abram, Abraham. I'm going to give you an everlasting. Did you hear that? Everlasting possession of promise, everlasting of possessions. I'm going to make you rich. I'm going to upgrade you. I'm going to bless your life, Abraham. I'm making a declaration to you. He didn't make it to nobody else. He made it to Abraham and he upgraded him. God, Abraham found favor in God. He made him a promise, but it all started. If we go back to what, we, what we've read, we find out that Abram, before he became Abraham, Abram sought the Lord. What am I saying to you? People of God, some of you saying, well, how can I be blessed? How can I get closer to, you got to seek God. You got to seek God, reverence God, stay in his face, stay in his word, people of God. And nothing will be denied. We, you've seen the journey of Abram. He first got his instruction. Let's go back to the very beginning. Abram got the instruction. What did God tell him to do? Leave your folk, leave your kinfolk, leave them. Do what I, I, go on this journey with me, Abram. That's what he was saying. And in this journey, there was challenges in the journey. Remember, 
he had to leave. He brought Lot along, which he wasn't supposed to do. Then he leaves Lot. Then he finds out Lot get kidnapped. Then Abram had to get involved with Lot's business and rescue Lot. Then he got a reward because of that. So he showed himself to be obedient. He showed himself to um, not only be obedient, but he uh, shown himself to be dedicated and in, in, in assisting. He became his brother's keeper. Um, he sought the face of the Lord. And through all of that, now we've seen that he had some challenges. We know he told a, a lie. We know he did. But God was sovereign. He, God, God had plans for Abram from the very beginning. So he, he didn't let the lie, he didn't let him seep in his lie. And until he he kind of blew the spotlight on his lie and blew him up and got him out of there. Because once again, the plan was attached to him to be fathers of many nations. See, what I'm trying to get you to see as we're walking through the word is how God purposefully calls out people for a purpose. And even though sometimes they make mistakes, like he told a lie, God check ties him. He found him out with his lie. Then he brought him on. Then he told him to separate. Him and Lot had to go their separate ways. Then they had to come back together because he had to help his family member. So we, we see the challenges of this man, but we yet still see a faithful, dedicated, prayerful man who himself had struggles because although he was doing what he was doing, people of God, he had a need in his life and it was revealed later on. It was revealed later on. The need was he never had a son. He never had an heir. And, and, and with all that he was doing, he never brought that up until God began to have that conversation when he said, well, what could you possibly give me? Like, really? Like, you know, and as I shared with you all, it sounded like he was some kind of frustration, frustrated with the situation, but God began to let him know there's a bigger picture here. I'm not just going to give you a son. I'm going to make you a father of many nations. I'm going to do something greater than you just being, having an heir. I'm going to give you a legacy. Woo, that word legacy. See, legacies are generational. You know, God, when many of you have set your legacy in place because you're saved, because you're seeking the face of God, and because you understand the value of purpose and destiny. And because of that, people of God, your children and your grandchildren and their children and so forth and so on, you are starting your, your, your spiritual legacy. And when we look at the fact of our legacy that is bigger than us, then we would serve differently. We would honor God differently. We would be differently toward each other when we understand that I'm not just in it for myself. There's generations to come. So I got to live holy. I got to do what's right because I'm setting a precedence. I'm setting a legacy. Like my mother started a legacy and it fell on me. And that legacy will continue through my nieces and, and my nephews and other people. God has a way that's so profound. So he begins to identify to Abraham what the bigger picture is. Now the big reveal comes. Abraham, I'm spiritually upgrading you because I'm going to have a people unto myself that I will be their God, that they, that I'm their God and they're my people. And so in verse nine, and God said unto Abraham, thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Now, this is this is the thing right here. This is, I love this. I love this chapter. The, those of you that's tuning in for the first time or or you, um, we are reading from Genesis 17 in its entirety. Right now I'm reading um, verse 10. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man, child among you shall be circumcised. Now, circumcision, for those of you that don't know what circumcision is, circumcision is whereby on the foreskin of the man's private parts is the foreskin. He wanted them to um, cut, cut it. 
okay, as a sign for the covenant. Now, those of you that say to you to yourself, so this is where circumcision comes from. Yes, if you want to know why um, babies are born and they get circumcised, this is where it comes from. Those that understand godly principles. Now, some people don't believe in circumcising their children. I've never had the privilege of having children, but if I ever had a male child, I definitely would circumcise my child. I am a believer and uh, my child would also be, and I'm not only going to circumcise my child, but I would also dedicate my child back to the Lord because children are not, they are great to, to, to have, but your children belong to the Lord. These are seeds, you know? And so you dedicate your child back to the Lord. You circumcise your children. So this is where this comes from. So God tells Abram that this covenant, every man child among you shall be circumcised. Now, let me tell you, this, this, this is where I love Abraham. This is why he was a friend of God. This is why he was faithful. This is why God made him the father of nations. That's why he was who he was because he didn't answer. He didn't see how pain, he didn't see the road ahead of him. He just obeyed God. And see, sometime, I don't know if any of us will be totally transparent, but I can talk me personally. There's some things that God have asked me to do that I have you know, sometimes been a little sassy, sometimes been a little taking my time. Um, and so Abram, Abraham didn't do that. So when God shared with him, he said, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. So anybody who circumcised, God would know that they have a covenant with him. So he would be able to identify that these are his people. So people that are uncircumcised, they were not his people. And that makes sense if you think about it, because they would have not known to do that, except for they got the instructions for someone who had a covenant with God. And so in verse 12, it says, and he that is eight days old. So listen, specific instructions, details to destiny, spiritual upgrade. People on people of God, please understand God was specific in his instructions. And he said, and he that is eight years, eight days old. So when a child he has up to eight days to get circumcised. Okay. Eight days shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or brought with money of a, any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So that means even adopted kids had to be circumcised. That means uh, any children born of your house. That means anyone that's in your house had to be circumcised. Now, this is what I loved. This I'm telling you, Abraham followed the details to the letter to get the blessing. And my God, if we don't catch nothing else in God's word, we need to catch that obedience. If we don't get nothing else, we need to know that is it is your, your blessings is tied to your details and your instructions that God give you. And so it says um, in verse 13, and he that is born in thy house and he that is brought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So God said, you do this for me, it's an everlasting covenant. But isn't it something, people of God, if we look at, now I'm not a man, I ain't never been there, I don't have no children, so I I know one thing, I know that is they always say it's better to do it when you're a baby because babies don't know no better when it's getting done to them. But if you're an older person, that gotta be the most painful thing in America. And just think about how God asked us, asked him to afflict themselves. Look at that. To afflict themselves in order that they would show the seriousness of that they were in agreement with the covenant. God wanted a sign, y'all, that they had uh, was in agreement with the covenant. What am I saying, people of God? When you say that you are 
really in covenant with God and you have relationship with God, there's certain expectations that's attached to that connection. God asked them to circumcise themselves, meaning that they would be set apart and different. That means that you would cut off the foreskin with other people that don't have covenant with me. They wasn't trying to do that. They were uncircumcised. And so anybody who was uncircumcised didn't have a covenant with God, but those that were circumcised had a covenant with God. And so what I'm saying to you is that God is into identification. He's into territorial identification. He's, he's looking for people that are about being different. You, you understand? People that belong to God are different. That's why we look at what he required of them was cutting of the foreskin as a sign of the covenant. We cannot be like the world and say that we are God's people because we have to be people of different people that are not different. They are not of God. Point blank. If you don't like it, that's I mean, it's, it's here for us to read. We have to be people of different. He was trying to set Abraham and the and the people that were made covenants with him, he was setting them aside, setting them apart. And people of God, that's a lost art form in today's society because we don't want to be set aside. We're so busy trying to fit in. We're so trying to be like everybody else that we can't be people of different. Listen, I tell people all the time, it ain't about my pants. It ain't about my makeup. It ain't about my nail polish. It ain't about my hair, but it's the fruit that I bear. We're looking at people's outward appearance and we're not even looking at the if, if their heart has been circumcised, if they handle people differently, if they love differently. You see, the, when we when you are truly have a covenant with God, there has to be a level of difference upon your life. And it's not about your dress as much as it is about your actions. When people are set aside, they act differently. They, they, they approach things differently. They're prayerful. They're not gossipy. When people are different, everything that they do is different. That's why when some people meet certain people, they say, why are you so different? That's because they've been around people who were uncircumcised. But when you have been circumcised by God, that means you've been upgraded by God. And when you've been upgraded by God, God will have expanded your life and blessed your life. So it pays to follow the details of God. And sometimes it ain't easy. Because to think about this, what I'm trying to tell you, that man was 99 years old and God's going to ask him to do it. He's old. He's not a baby, but he had to go through that painful process, no doubt, to prove to God. What am I saying, people of God? Sometime in our painful processes, it will circumcise our heart. It will circumcise our spirit so that we can have that covenant with God. Because you have to be a people of difference. You can't be like everybody else. And the world has tricked us into believing that we can have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. And that's why we all messed up right now. God is tired of folk uh, having uncircumcised spirits. He want our spirits to be circumcised. He want our spirit to be different so that he can bless our life. You can't. You did not. Let me tell you, I keep telling y'all, maybe back in the day, you could get away with this stuff, honey. This is not the season and this is not the time. You don't have time to play with folk. This is the time now, people of God, that you got to be silent in your face and you got to make your election sure. You don't have time to play with people. People play too much and play time is over. It's over, y'all. It's over. So he begins to tell him that in verse 13, that for an everlasting covenant, one thing about that, that blesses my life. An everlasting covenant. Do you know what kind of favors upon your life when you got an everlasting covenant? Do you know the blessings that's bestowed you when you have an everlasting covenant? But you can't have the covenant if you're not following in the details and following the instructions of the Lord. Everybody want a blessing, but nobody want to do what God called them to do. I've never seen nothing like it in all my day. We must Obey what God called us to do in this season. We don't have time for anything else but to obey him. So in verse 14, and the uncircumcised man, and check this out. God is amazing. And the uncircumcised man, child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He have broken my covenant. Good googly move. Now God is laying down the law. If you don't have, 
if you don't get circumcised, in essence, if you don't be in pain, <laughs> I'm gonna cut you off. Because what God showed in this, in that one verse right there, lets me know if you're not willing to go through for me, then I, I'm gonna cut you off. I don't need you. I don't need you. And that's what people need to understand. If you're not willing to make that sacrifice, I heard somebody say, Oh, this and all that. Oh, it's hard. Baby, you're not, you know, you're not ready to make the sacrifice. God has not, you have not thought about how valuable God has been in your life. And you're not willing to give up your drugs, your drinking, your running around, your whoring around and all that kind of stuff you're doing. If you're not ready to give up all of that, hello, somebody. He said, he going to cut you off. You ain't got no covenant with him. And you see what's going on today, people of God, the truth of the matter is we are allowing people in that ain't got no covenant with God. We are sitting, some people are sitting under people that really don't have no covenant with God because they refuse to be different. They refuse to be circumcised, circumcising their mind, circumcising their spirit. They refuse to do it. And God was specific in his explanation to Abraham. For those that will not do it, they have broken my covenant. And I'm not going to have no fellowship with them. I'm not going to be fooling up with them in a nutshell, if I could paraphrase. Why do we think that we get away with stuff? But he was adamant in speaking with Abraham, laying down the law. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be with them. I'm not going to be with them. I'm not, I'm not, if they don't, if they don't have my covenant, they're not circumcised, they will have no part of me. And in verse 15, and God said unto Abraham, now this is what I love about this, that God, he honors covenant. He honors the marriage covenant. So Abraham is blessed. God speaks to the man, speaks to the head, right? But he didn't leave the woman out either. He upgraded her too. So because he upgraded her, he changed her name too. God is good, ain't he? See, so God don't leave women out. He includes them. Yes, he does. Uh huh. And God said unto Abraham, as for Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt no, shall not call her name Sarah, Sari, but Sarah shall her name be. So he upgrades her changes her name also. And then, and I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Now, you know what he said to Hagar? He gave her about her son Ishmael and stuff of that nature, but he not making her the mother of nations. Hello, it could only be one mother. <laughs> Glory to God. And so he made Sarah the mother of nations because she had the marriage covenant. Okay? The marriage covenant is important because if he speaks to the man and you're connected to the man by way of covenant marriage, God upgrades you too. So that's why you got to be careful who you marry. If you marry somebody who don't have a covenant with God, if you marry somebody who is uncircumcised, you're going to be in trouble. And I'm going to tell you something, all the years of all my life, and I was sharing this with someone not too long ago, when I was coming up in ministry, I just heard, this is what I heard, you know, in, in studying God's word. I never, you know, some parts we skip over, we have blind spots, but it says he that find of a wife, find of a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. So I think that if the man find you, you got, you've been found, right? Not me go looking to find somebody. He find me. But I found out people of God, even though you may be found, you got to be careful how you being found because what if some uncircumcised Philistine come after you? Or what if some uncircumcised man who don't have a covenant with God come after you? Then what you going to do? But you got a covenant. Hmm. What do you do then? You got to be careful. Because if he don't have a covenant with God, but you do, why would you enter into 
a, a, a relationship with that person, wouldn't it make sense to be with somebody who does have a covenant so y'all can both be upgraded at the same time? You, I mean, just logic. I mean, just common sense logic to me. And But what if you didn't have a covenant at the time and then you marry somebody, but when you when you get the covenant, it should upgrade your whole household. That's how it normally works. Unless that person still wants to be an uncircumcised Philistine and rebel, then it's nothing you can do about that. You have to go your way and God will give you somebody. So I'm just saying, you look at this as you're going through the word of God, it's those question marks that I say you should write down notes about and question certain things because it makes you understand how God operates. God is a God of decency and order. He upgraded Abraham and his wife. How about that? So when I've heard a couple say, well, God is moving on my life and he is using me and my husband ain't being used, all this other kind of stuff, you full of nanny. You just trying to be in competition with your spouse. But if God is going to use you, he's going to honor your husband too, or vice versa. He's going to make you, make you raise you up and leave your man down there. He doesn't do that, y'all. So if you enter into a covenant with a man and y'all get married, God start bringing you up. Okay, then he going to bring him up too. According to this, he upgraded Abram to Abraham and turned around and blessed his wife and upgraded her too. So this is a sheer example of how God will upgrade you based on covenant, based on order. So after he shared what he was going to do with Sarah, the Bible says once again, then Abram fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear? Now, the unique thing is that many times I've heard this uh, preached. They always talk about how Sarah laughed. And I've been reading this forever and a day. And for the first time, I realized that Abraham also laughed. <laughs> <laughs> for the first time when I read this again, I said, wow, you know what? Abraham, la Abraham laughed. He laughed at that. He thought that was funny. He, th <laughs> he honored God, got on his face, but he thought that, that was a joke. And how many of you know that sometimes God will tell you some stuff that you got to do, but laugh. And, and you know, and I am guilty of it, y'all. I am not going to tell y'all no fib. I am guilty of sometimes God will tell me something and I bust, I start laughing. And my words to God is like, God, you just told me a funny, you know, but it's true. We as humans, sometimes we have a problem dealing with where the blessings that God's going to bless us with. Sometimes the blessings are so overwhelming. Sometimes they're so like, are you kidding me type that you have your mind has problems comprehending. Now, back then we know that Abram, Abraham did not have the Holy Spirit. He had communication straight with God. But we that have the Holy Spirit, that's why we got to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. That's why people of God, we have to get in the spirit so that when God does say stuff that's just funny, we have to get in the spirit realm and let our eyes see in the spirit so that our mind can catch up. So Abram laughed, and then in verse 18, and Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. So he was letting him know, I'm not talking about Ishmael. <laughs> Y'all can... <laughs> oh, my goodness. I tell you, he said, I'm not talking about Ishmael, Abram. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Isaac. God named him. He named him. God identified him and named him and said, I will, she will bear you a son and his name will be Isaac, which is the promised child. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, he, one thing I love about God in this, when you're reading this, I don't know if, if you're like me, I'm looking at it, I said, go ahead, God. You, you, one thing I love about God, he made it very clear 
that who was the promise and who was the the uh the uh permissive the the per permissive will child the perfect will child and the permissive will child he made it very clear and he differentiated between the two he made it clear that ishmael would not be getting the same blessings that isaac got he was clear about that and that lets me know that you can be permissive all you want but then don't get mad at the promise because the promise is the promise and there's benefits to the promise where there's lack lack of prop, uh, benefits to the permissive will blessing and so he says to him as for ishmael i have heard thee behold i have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly 12 princes shall he be god and i will make him a great nation but oh my 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 but but my covenant will i establish with isaac which sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year so he was specific next year she gonna bear isaac that is so profound to me people of god because god was setting up order so he's a god of order you can't let me tell you something i don't care you can be in timbuktu and i'm a witness because i've lived this life what i'm getting ready to tell y'all you can be in timbuktu but when your destiny is someplace else and you have been ordained to carry the assignment of that purpose god will shift your life for it to come to pass god is amazing how he does stuff when you look back over your life, how God has told you to shift and go places and do things and stuff of that nature. And you go to this place and you get the blessing and you go there, you meet your husband or you meet your wife. God got a purpose behind all of that. And what we see here is that I got to upgrade you. I got to expand you because there's a purpose attached. This is not about you, Abraham and Sarah. I'm finna make you national. I'm getting ready to make y'all national. I'm about to make y'all international because you are mother of many nations. You are father of many nations. It's not just about two old people getting hooked up and having babies at an old age. There's a purpose attached to it. And when you understand purpose and destiny, you understand God does everything for a reason. So whatever you find yourself in your life, people of God, you have to say to God be the glory because there is a purpose attached to it. Now they were laughing, but God still had a purpose. You can laugh about it, but God still got a purpose. And so in verse 21, it says, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off. Now, this is what I love. And I thought this was so cute of God. He left off. God walked off. <laughs> left off talking with him. And God went up from Abraham, went upward. So he came down to talk to him, came down to visit to him, came down to prophesy to him, came down to set order. And then he went back up. Oh, my, my, my. God came down for Abraham. Look at that. God is good. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all. Now, this is it. He immediately, he didn't delay. He didn't go ask Sarah this time. He didn't ask nobody. He went and obeyed what God told him. In order to believe God, you got to, you, you got to, uh, in order to obey God, you got to believe him. And so the Bible says, and in verse 23, and Abram, Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house and all that were brought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the same, the self same day. He didn't wait, y'all. The Bible indicates that very clearly and specifically to let us know he did not delay the same self day. I mean, God went up and he went to work. Ain't that something? That only goes to show you how he was blessed because he didn't sit on his instructions. Some of us would be a lot further along and be a lot more blessed if we would 
do what God tells us to do immediately. Sometimes we procrastinate too long. And you know what they say, if you study long, you study wrong. And so we don't have time to procrastinate. We got to move at the speed of lightning. I love my administrative team and I want to see you win ministries because one thing about them, they are on it. They they move like quick, uh, quick lightning. Sometimes as people of God, we don't get instructions and move quickly. We take our time. We drag our feet. We make all excuses. My neck hurt. My back hurt. I would do this. I would do that. But I'm busy. I'm this and I'm that. And we procrastinate and we miss our blessing. But Abraham did not wait in the same self day he went to work and started circumcising everybody including his son and everybody in his house and um and then what he did in verse 24 and abraham was 90 years old and nine still 99 years old and he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin so at his old age he got circumcised so I, I don't know, but in modern day time, I would think he would be in a lot of pain. But he was willing to go through the pain to obey God. Wow. That's a word, y'all. I'm willing to obey the pain to obey God. It may be painful right now, but there's a bigger blessing attached to it. My God in the morning. And so, and Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Um, This is why they they um honor the in jewish custom and religion that's why they have their bar mitzvahs at 13. this is one of the scriptures as also used as such um in the same uh self same day as abraham circumcised and ishmael his son um and all the men of his house born in the house and brought with money of the stranger were circumcised with him, thus reading of the scripture. People of God, we understand that it pays to obey God because in our obedience, people of God, God will upgrade us. In our obedience, God makes covenant with us. In our obedience, nothing can be denied. We have to learn that when God gives us instructions, it's for a reason, it's for a purpose, it's for a bigger picture. Abraham was just looking at his age. He was just looking at that him and his wife was old people. They probably thought that they was past their time. They probably didn't think there was any more sprouts to them. They didn't probably think that there was any more life to them. And a lot of you may have felt the same way. Some of you probably feel like um, you all um, maybe past your prime, maybe past your time. Feel like, God, can you honestly do this for me? Can you bless me with a business at this old age? Can you bless me with love at this old age? Can you bless me with a new life? Can you bless me with, you know, all of my dreams coming true? I'm an older person. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And God, it hasn't happened yet, but it doesn't mean that it won't happen. Please understand people of God, every delay is not a denial. Just because it was delayed doesn't mean it's denied. And because of that, you need to know that just like with Abraham, God will upgrade you. He'll change your name. He'll upgrade you. Amen. Glory to God. Who would have ever think it that at my age, I'm going to get married again. Amen. Because God has a way of upgrading your life. And it does. It supersedes your age. It supersedes your location. It supersedes everything because God has purpose and destiny. What I found out as we're reading that chapter, we found out that it pays to do what God tells you to do immediately when he tells you to do it. Don't sit on the promises of God. When he gives you instructions, follow the instructions to the letter. We as a people have a hard time following things to the letter. And because we don't follow things to the letter, we miss our blessing. But people of God, Abraham was upgraded. God changed his name. He did two things for him. He's changed his name and he told him, I'm going to give you a covenant. So I want you to do something for me. I'm changing your name. Now do something for me. And I say that to you, people of God, because God wants you to do something for him. He wants you to live holy. He wants you to be different. He was calling them out. He was saying, Abraham, I'm going to give you a different path from everybody else. You can't be like everybody else. But anybody who doesn't do what I'm asking them to do, I'm going to cut them off. And I will suggest to you, people of God, there's some people that have been cut off. There's some people that do not have a covenant with God because they refuse to obey God. And that's very unfortunate. But the truth of the matter is they refuse to obey God. 
Some people say, I don't want to go through the pain. Some people say, I don't want to go through the suffering. I don't want to go through the warfare. We hear that all the time. I don't want to go through the warfare. But what if your warfare is your covenant? What if your pain is your covenant? What if that's your covenant? What if that sets you aside from everybody else? Are you still willing to do it? Or are you going to complain about it? Are you not going to obey God? That's what you have to ask yourself, people of God. I want all of God. And I hope and pray people of God, that you want God to. Because in this day and an hour, I'm going to tell you the truth. It ain't too much we should be wanting. <laughs> I my people that want everything in the world right about now. They, they must know something I don't. But in this day and age, people of God, it's imperative that we understand that we our desires should be toward the Lord. Our desires should want to please God. Our desire is that he will be pleased with our life. Anything else? If he If he blesses you, people of God, with any additional things, that's a blessing. Honor him. Praise him for that. But please understand, anything he gives you, is it just means more responsibility. If he bless you with a relationship, it just means more responsibility for you to pray more, for you to pray so that you can not become distracted and still stay on the straight and narrow way and safeguard your mate because if the devil don't try to get to you, he'll get to your, your significant other. So it just it just causes more room for more responsibility, people of God. That's all that is, more responsibility. So, you know, it's a blessing, but it's more responsibility. You know, what God, what God was putting on Abraham was more responsibility. He said, walk up right before me. That's remember the keyword walk up right before me. Perfect. It means I'm putting an expectation on you, Abraham. I'm putting a, a burden on you, Abraham, that if you don't get it right, then it's going to affect everybody in your household. It's going to affect everybody because you're the father. You're the leader over them. Wow. He gave him a big responsibility, people of God, to be over all those people. He gave Sarah a big responsibility to be the mother. Glory to God. The mother. Of all nations. Wow, that's big. He didn't even do that for Eve. He did that for Sarah. He did that for Abraham. That's big. An everlasting covenant is what he promised them. An everlasting covenant. Unbreakable, undeniable, favor, blessings. But there were some conditions attached to it. What am I saying, people of God? We want all the blessings, but we don't want to meet the conditions. We have to meet the conditions, people of God. There's no other way around it. There's no other way. I promise you, you cannot take a shortcut from doing what God called you to do. You got to do what he called you to do. You got to obey his instructions. That's how you get blessed. Anything other than that, he's going to cut you off. And I believe people of God, there's some people that's cut off. That's why they have it so hard. That's why they, they're financially unstable. That's why they're mentally unstable. That's why so much is going on because they have been cut off because they don't have a covenant with the Lord. We have to get our covenant back. We have to get in the presence of the Lord and we got to follow his instructions, people of God. Oh, yes, indeed. If we, if you didn't learn nothing else from that chapter, you should learn that that's what we have to do. I'm telling you, it's getting gooder and gooder every week. It's getting gooder and gooder. Amen. Next week, we're going to be in chapter 18. I want you guys to read it thoroughly. And I pray that as God, you read it, you, um, God is ministering your heart to your heart about um, his word, that you're learning ever the more about him and what his requirements is and what he requires of you and how he operates. Learn the God of your salvation so that you will know from what he will do, from what he won't do, so that the devil will not beguile you, that the devil will not trick you, to tell you that you all alone, that God is not with you, he's not going to fight for you, the devil is a liar. The, the, you know, I tell people all the time, you, first of all, if the devil's always talking to you, that's a problem, number one. You should not have the devil just feel so carefree and so casual that he could just talk to you anytime he wants. Are you kidding me? Oh, no, I refuse. Mm -mm, the devil's a liar. Only person that's going to talk to me is the Lord. I refuse to talk to the devil and I won't even let him talk to me. I refuse. The devil is a liar. I'm quick because people of God, you cannot afford to let that devil talk to you. You cannot afford to allow the devil to speak negative things in your mind and you take it. 
Oh no, the devil's a liar. Mm -mm, no. No. I'm going to regurgitate God's word. I'm going to speak God's word. Whatever the situation is, you got to learn to speak God's word. And that's why it's imperative that you learn God's word so that you can use it as a tool, as a weapon. A weapon when you pray uh, against the devices of the enemy, you have to pray the word of God over your life and your situation. Is God able to do the impossible? We just read he gave that man, the old man and old woman, a, a baby. Okay. He, you know, Isaac did, Isaac was born. <laughs> Isaac did, you read on, Isaac was born. So God did it. What I'm saying is that God is able to do what seems impossible to man. God is able. And that is what stirs my faith. That is what keeps me going on each day. That's what keeps me holding on because I know God is able. And if he don't do it, he can't. Listen, if God don't do it, he don't do it. But if he's able to do it, he's going to do it. He just wants us to believe that he's able to do it. And if you believe he's able to do it, beloved, he's going to do it. So let him do it. Believe that he can. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God is good. And that's why I love the word of God. And I love God. And I love you. And I pray on tonight, and even those of you that may see the rebroadcast, that something was said tonight that will uh, bless your life and will strengthen your life and, and just that you will grow by leaps and bounds in the things of God, that all, all of your dreams that God has showed you, that it will come to pass, that you will not laugh at it, but you will believe in the God of your salvation, that he will, he's faithful enough to bring it to pass. Listen, if God showed it to you, if he said he's going to do it, trust in what he says. He is going to do it. He is going to do it. I'm telling you, he is going to do it. God is not a man that he should lie. If he said it, he means what he says and says what he means. He's a great God. He's awesome. And he's so worthy to be praised. And nothing shall be denied. God is good. And I'm telling you, I'm excited to be a part of the fold. I'm excited to be in a covenant with God because he's awesome like that. Amen. So we thank God for each and every one of you that's logged on today. Um, we thank God for those of you that's walking um, in the word with us uh, each week. We appreciate you. We thank God for the feedback. Listen, I'm going to ask each and every one of you um, at the conclusion of this message, please tag and share, tag and share and invite others to Bible study so they too can learn the word of God so that they can be solid in their faith and strong in their faith. And not only do I want you to share this, I also want you to go to our website and I want to see you win that org. And I want you to subscribe to our website. Um, we are going to be doing some phenomenal things coming up and we want to bring you on board. We want to make sure that you are connected. So let's stay connected. Um, make sure that you tag and share, invite your friends to like our Facebook page, invite your friends to, uh, like, um, you know, our website so that they too can subscribe and so that they can get a copy of our upcoming newsletter and some things that we have on the table. I'm so excited about seeing you in your winning season. I'm excited about your destiny. I'm excited about what God has for you. And I'm telling you, it is phenomenal. Oh my goodness. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has prepared for you. And I'm telling you, I want to see you win. And God does too. And I'm telling you, you're moving in the right direction toward the finish line. And that is to your destiny. So I'm excited again for you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on tonight. We thank you for the word of God, because we know that heaven and earth shall pass away. And it's the word of God that will stand. We thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. And even those that may see the rebroadcast, I pray God that you will bless these, your people, oh God, bless them with wisdom, and understanding of your word. I pray God in the name of Jesus, that you would Oh, God, put the word in us, oh, God, that we will not sin against you, God, that you will put the word in us, oh, God, that we would be strengthened in our faith and strengthened in our walk, God. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, if there be any sick among us tonight, God, that you will heal them, God. I pray for the spirit of peace to overtake our households, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would do a work in our lives like no other time as it is before God. I pray God in the name of Jesus that those that are seeking you, God, that they shall find you, God. Those that's calling on your name, God, you shall hear them, God. I pray God in the name of Jesus that you would do supernatural things in our life, God. Oh God, we thank you for the spiritual upgrade. We thank you for the manifestation. Oh God, the expansion, God. We thank you, God, that you're changing names. I thank you today, God, that rings are falling. I thank you, God. Oh God, that you're upgrading lives, God. I thank you tonight, God. God, that you're bringing forth purpose in the lives of your people, God. I thank you that 
that businesses are being birthed, God. Oh, God, I thank you, God, for the movement in the spirit, God. I thank you, God, for your people, God, that you're blessing them coming in and blessing them going out. God, I thank you, God, for people, God, that is in love with the word of God. I thank you for lovers of your word, lovers of you, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that there is a people, God, that's hungry for your word, God. And Father, I thank you, God, for our souls being filled. Oh, God, on tonight, I thank you that our minds are at peace, God, tonight. I thank you, God, that every diabolical plot of the enemy is ceased and dismissed. I thank you, God, that every plot has been exposed and dismantled in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, we thank you tonight, God, that we're more than conquerors in your name, God. We thank you tonight, God. Oh, God, hallelujah, that you're making us the head and not the tail, that you're making us above and not beneath. We thank you tonight, God, for what you're doing in our life, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your power, God, tonight. Oh, God, that break every chain and every fetter. We thank you tonight, God. Oh, God, that you're doing a work in us, oh, God, that no devil can stop, no devil can end her. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. For wisdom and understanding, God. We thank you for understanding, God, what you're calling us into, God. Oh, God, will you lift us up, God? How you expanding our purpose and our destiny. Thank you for blessing our families. Thank you, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, for upgrading our shut in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for increase. God, increase. Increase, Jesus. We thank you. Increase, 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 God. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for increase. Increase, increase, increase. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you, God. Oh, God, we thank you that lack is cursed tonight, God. Oh, God, abundance is released, God. In Oh, God, we thank you tonight, God. We thank you tonight. 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 Oh, God, that we're going from disobedient to obedient, God. Oh, God, that we shall, oh, God, move quickly and swift, God, when you speak to us, God. No more delay, God. We bind up the spirit of slothfulness. Oh, God, we thank you tonight, God. Oh, Oh, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you tonight, God. We thank you tonight. 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 We thank you tonight, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, and we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. And we bless God. We bless God for each and every one of you. We thank God again. Hallelujah for every leader of I Want to See You Win Ministries. We thank God for Pastor Derek Miles. Amen. We thank God for Evangelist Brown and Sharonda, Prophet Sharonda Mims and, and, and Minister uh, uh, Patricia Capers. Amen. We thank God for all of the leaders. Amen. We thank God for all of the leaders. Dr. Lewis, we thank God. 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 Woo, we thank God, hallelujah, Woo, for what God is doing in the life of his people. Woo, my, 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 glory to God. Get ready, y'all, hallelujah. The blessings are on the way, hallelujah. The blessings that's on to overtake you. Woo, God, hallelujah. The blessings of the Lord make us rich and add of no sorrow, hallelujah. When you walk up right before God, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. You can look for it. You can look for the blessing. Hallelujah. Oh, you can look for the blessing. Hallelujah. When you walk up right before the Lord. And I'm telling you, God has a remnant. God, hallelujah. There's a remnant. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we bless God tonight for what he's doing in the lives of his people. I thank God. It is my honor, my privilege to serve each and every one of you. Every time we come together, we are excited about what God is doing in the life of his people. I'm excited to see each and every one of you win. Me and Pastor Derek, we are excited about that. And we are excited about what God is doing in each and every one of your lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. May heaven smile upon you and you all be richly blessed. For those of you that desire to give, because I don't like to stay in it in nobody's way. Amen. Those of you that may be on the line for the first time, 
If you would like to give, you can. Amen. You can give by cash app, dollar sign, Apostle Angela Daniels, or you can donate to uh, I want to see you win at gmail.com, or you can go directly to our website at www.iwantoseeyouwin.org, and you can, there's a link there to give. Um, but cash app, you can give it right away. And we thank God for every seed sower, everyone that ties into this ministry. We appreciate you. Amen. For your liberal giving and your obedience, because obedience is better than sacrifice, and you're going to win when you obey God. And so, Father, we thank you for every seed so every tither that's paid their tithes, oh God, this week and on today. Father, we pray that you will bless them coming in and bless them going out, that you will bless them in a way that only you can. I decree and declare the abundance, oh God, let it overflow in their life, God. Bless them on their job promotion-wise. Bless them on all their ways, the works of their hand. Bless the business owners, oh God. Bless them for all that they do, God. Bless them coming in and bless them going out. We rebuke the spirit of poverty off the lives of your people, God. We the decree and declare prosperity will be the order of the day as they walk up right before you and obey you, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree it to be so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We thank God for those of you that's sowing and those of you that's giving. I appreciate you all for all that you do, the words of encouragement, um, the feedback that you give us. You can always give us an email at I want to see you win at gmail.com. We do read every email. We thank God for all of you and uh, join us again on Sunday. Amen. At 11 o'clock as we continuously to walk out our series. Amen. Um, uh, the series of being spiritually afflicted versus spiritually sick. And um, I'm telling you, God's got a word. He's got a word on Sunday. Amen. Tag and share, tag and share. Let somebody know that Sunday we're going to be here at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And I'm telling you, God got a word. God got a word. And I'm so excited about it. I just want to say to each and every one of you, be blessed. May the Lord bless you and keep you till we come together again. Also, look out for our flyers that we will be posting. We're having a prayer revival at the end of this month. And we have some dynamic speakers and we are so excited about what God is doing through the power of prayer. Thank you for those of you that was on the live on Monday as we come together for our corporate prayer. Listen, something happens when we gather together for prayer. It's not about me. It's about all of us coming together. Amen. And uh, we just bless God for each and every one of you that um, is faithful to prayer, faithful to coming to Bible study, faithful to coming to Sunday service. God sees it. Because I'm going to tell you something. In this pandemic, for those of you that's been faithful to come on this live and do what you do, trust me, that's big. And God sees it. It's not about me seeing it. It's about God seeing it. And he's going to bless your life. Because if you could be this faithful in this time, you could just imagine what you'd be any other time. So God's going to honor you and bless you during this time and this season. I don't care what's going on in the world. God's going to take care of you because he's going to remember your tithe and he's going to remember your seed. So he's going to remember your faithfulness, faithfulness and obedience. If you haven't remembered reading through the word, that's one thing you need to know. There is blessings attached to those who are faithful and obedient. You cannot be denied. Show me in the word where somebody who was faithful and obedient and they were denied. No, no such thing. God honors people that are different and will stay the course of obedience. Amen. So I just bless God. Thank you for those of you that's sowing right now. We appreciate you. And may God bless you and keep you is my prayer. I thank God for you. You all have a wonderful night. Okay. Be blessed and um, stay prayerful and stay watchful. Good night. Bye-bye.